Welcome back to hour number two of the Gary Sutton Show here on WSBA. We turn our attention to Pennsylvania, and who better to talk about Pennsylvania right now than the standing executive, the governor of the state of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett, who joins us here on the Gary Sutton Show. Good morning, Governor. How are you? Good morning, Gary. How are you doing? Uh, doing very well. I know you're a busy guy. You're running all over the place. We appreciate you stopping by this morning. And uh, let's see, you have a budget that got passed. You're four for four in that regard, right? Four for four, and uh, what I would like to see is the uh, improvement uh, in our unemployment rate from 8.1% to 5.6, over 185,000 new private sector jobs in Pennsylvania, and we continue to make Pennsylvania stronger. You look at, and I'm going to be very blunt about this, you look at, at the popularity polls out there, I'm sure you see the same things that we see all the time, and your polls have generally been low, uh, depending upon what poll you look at. Uh, why aren't people getting that? Why aren't they understanding those numbers out there uh, that are getting better? Well, um, it's a matter of trying to communicate that, and it's a mystery to me uh, of, of the the fact that some people that haven't seen those numbers, because we keep reporting them to you in the press and, and mm -hmm. the media, and you report them somewhat. But you have uh, other people, you know, the other side of the aisle, uh, continuing to uh, talk about um, saying that we cut education spending. We didn't cut education spending, and they know it. Uh, and people have seized on that, and that, I think, started the process. But as we, as I always say, the poll is November fourth. It's not now, mm -hmm. and we're already starting to see that that improvement as people are starting to get the message. And I've been governing, and, and as you see the campaign going forward, you're going to see the positives. You're going to see the contrast with my opponent, who comes from your county down there. Mm -hmm. And what I look forward to doing in the next four years and keeping our taxes low and growing the economy of Pennsylvania. But more importantly, um, as you recall, Gary, we made some promises in 2010, and we've kept those promises. We have followed us, and it wasn't easy. Everybody knew it was going to be tough, and we forewarned everybody it was going to be tough. But you know, many times you see people, well, that's what we want you to do to other people, not to us. Your um, lieutenant governor came out and said uh, that the $1 billion education cut is a damned lie, quote-unquote. Uh, I agree with that. Straight, straightforward on it. Why is it a lie? Well, because uh, the education cut of state money into education funding for K through 12 was reduced in uh, the prior administration in the last two years of the Rendell administration, and it was replaced with one-time federal money called the stimulus money. Remember that show exactly. already money that was supposed to mm -hmm. put on roads and everything? Well, it was put into the operating budget of Pennsylvania for education, uh, and that money was guaranteed to disappear when I took office in 2011, and it did. Uh, we did not have replacement money. The money that had been taken out, the state money had been taken out by Governor Rendell, was put into all kind of other programs for spending at the state. And we would have had to raise taxes. I think in the first year, the average family of four would have paid $913 additional taxes. The second year, it would have been over $1,200. The third year, over $1,200. And I made a promise that we weren't going to raise taxes. But in the meantime, as the economy has been coming back, we we have increased our, our funding to the highest point in the history of Pennsylvania. But the public sector union and the Democrats don't want to acknowledge what the facts are. I mean, it, this is simple math. When you subtract state money, put in one-time federal right. money, it would, it would be, you know, like, okay, you won $10,000 when you got a, uh, when you went to the lottery office and, and you got a scratch-off ticket, and you started making your budget saying, you know, I'm going to win $10,000 every year, so that's my new budget. We wouldn't do that. No. You wouldn't do that at the station. Well, that's exactly what the state and many of the school districts who were warned not to do that, many of the school districts uh, put that money right into their operating budget. They should have put the money into capital projects, but they put it into the operating budget. Governor, last week we saw the how big decision come down from the D.C. Circuit Court, which basically said, and we saw another decision come down the opposite of that. It'll probably end up in the Supreme Court. But the idea that uh, only states would receive subsidies who have state exchanges. There are 16 of those in the, in the country. Uh, we are not one of those. We're one of the 34 who chose not to do that. What concerns do you have about um, you know people being able to afford health care if those subsidies are not able to be used uh, by those who are using the federal exchanges? Well, you, you got into a very complicated uh, I know. 
area there. The reason we chose not to adopt our own state system is the federal government, the Obama administration, never gave us the guidelines, uh, never gave us an idea. And as you see, many people who have who had uh, created theirs, they failed because the Obama administration kept changing what the guidelines are. Our Department of uh, Public Welfare and Department of Health are working closely with the Obama administration uh, in, in this respect. As you know, people, <clears throat> there's a push to expand Medicaid uh, in this area, and what we want to do is make it much more on the private side where we'll take the money, but the individuals <clears throat> who would be recipients of that would go out on the exchange that we have created for this area. And it's not a, not a computer exchange. We have insurance providers who have said they will offer a, a package that can be used in, in this area, similar to uh, the CHIP program for, for children. Mm -hmm. This would be more for the, this category of people in the expanded area of 150% of poverty, 100% to 150% of poverty, that they would be able to use this area, but they'd have to be invested. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have reformed the, uh, if we get our get the permission from the federal government, reformed our Medicaid program so that it is much more uh, affordable to the state. We were the second richest in the country. We can't afford to continue to do that. We need to have one that is, meets the needs of Pennsylvanians. So as we do that, we are making ourselves in a much better position to provide a great deal more with the money that the federal government is sending us. You know, and I also want to point out that. Part of the shortfall uh, in the budget in the last fiscal year <clears throat> was the federal government telling us they were going to reduce Pennsylvania's Medicaid match from the federal government by about $350 million. Uh, so that has created a great right. deal of difficulty. So the federal government, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, has really been messing with a system that was somewhat working before to try to accommodate the, the Obamacare, and it really isn't working. As you said, it's a complex problem, yet at the same time, you also said if the federal government gives us permission, and for most people out here, it's a very simple problem. If you take more money in my pocket than I can really afford, I'm a bad straight. So that becomes the simple end of it, right. but the complex problem to get to it. That's right. Uh, there was a question from one of our callers yesterday, and I wanted to share this with you. I'll give it to you exactly as he gave it to me. He said, what gave you the perception that it was okay to balance the budget by using, quote, unquote, rainy day funds? Now that you've done that and the bonding companies are planning to lower our rating, what happens if we have some sort of emergency that requires a lot of money being spent to fix the problem? We didn't use rainy day funds because we haven't had any rainy day funds since the Randell administration. That's the short answer. Okay. And you look, though, at the uh, low read of our ratings right now, which is something that's happened uh, from Moody's right. Investor Service downgraded the rating on $11.1 billion in state general obligation funds from A small A2 to A small A3. Uh, your thoughts and your reaction to that? It's exactly what I predicted, Gary, and I think we may have had a conversation about this a number of months ago, that if we didn't start addressing the pension system, which right. I've been trying to address for three years, that the uh, ratings uh, companies, like Moody's, was going to downgrade us. The downside of that is, well, many downsides, but the number one downside is it costs the state, it costs school districts, it costs uh, municipalities and counties more money uh, to borrow money uh, in what they have to return the borrow level. It raises their rate of borrowing. Uh, and that more money comes from one per one group, the taxpayers of Pennsylvania. We've been talking to the legislature. We've got to begin the process in order to uh, get our fiscal house in order, in order to keep the uh, pension systems in long term sustainable for those who are already in it. Uh, but so far, as you know, we're struggling with the legislature to get 101 votes in the House 26 votes in the Senate. Right. You got my vote. That's the one, you know, I get that. I sign it, and we're really pushing it. This is not a Republican-Democrat issue. This is a property owner, a taxpayer issue here in Pennsylvania. They want this done. We need to get the Republicans and Democrats. And too many times the, uh, the commentators, the media, doesn't push on the Democrats to come up with votes also because it affects their constituents as well as, as anybody. Well, we say and, all the and, time. And, yeah. and frankly, you know, again, talking about my opponent from your county, uh, he has denied that there is a pension issue. We have film of him, and you probably have seen it in some commercials we're running. He denies there's a pension issue. And my question for the last six months when all of them were denying the suspension issue, well, would somebody please go tell Moody's that because they think there is and they're about to lower our bond rating, and they did.
Well, it seems like we can't get beyond politics and talking about this anymore. The politics becomes the filter through which we have to go what side we're on instead right. of looking at it and saying, listen, we've got a real problem here. I talked with uh, the guy yesterday who's come up with a plan that you support, who is uh, Representative Tobash, and uh, we, we discussed it yesterday about his hybrid plan as opposed to what many – uh, conservatives are saying we want a straight 401k plan. You like the hybrid plan, even though it doesn't deal right now with exactly the here and now over a period of, I think, about 30 years, it is going to give back some real savings. It's uh, We were talking yesterday that it's a situation that didn't come about all of a sudden. I don't know if you're going to fix it all of a sudden. Well, the, the situation is uh, cannot be solved. If somebody's looking for that silver bullet, you know, the instant miracle drug that solves the problem. Yeah, fix the uh, 50 billion liability right away. You can't do right. that. There's, there's nothing there. But you've got to start. And, and the starting point is to take new employees and put them into a new system rather than keeping to, to, to continue digging the hole of the system we're already in deeper and deeper and deeper. Then you got to come back and work on and it requires a great deal of political courage in the legislature to make some tough votes uh, in order to start fixing the existing system. But you start with the new employees, His and, and I would have liked to have seen, and I think he would, uh, a 401k for all new employees. Well, there aren't enough votes for it. Right. Yeah, there, sh- there should be enough votes for that. Frankly. Basically, you get to the 401k thing, and the hybrid part comes after $50,000, if that's I'm, right. if that's I'm correct exactly. on that. Yeah. Everybody asks me, well, why, do you, why are you doing that? This doesn't, and some, some Republicans are not voting for it because it doesn't go far enough. Well, you got to start the ball, and this is a starting point. And you, frankly, we started, we have to come back next year and the year after until we find that political courage uh, of votes or uh, common sense that says we can, this is unsustainable. And, and I don't know if he shared this number with you, Gary. In 1718, $3.3 billion, that's a B like in board, mm-hmm. will be contributed by the state in its budget to the pensions of the state teachers and the state employees, the legislature, the judges, and so forth. $3.3 billion. Mm. That's unsustainable. The severance tax, you hear a lot of that talked about in the campaign here. Uh, your opponent uh, is in favor of severance, the severance pack. He's, I think the, the wording is uh, make the uh, uh, state pay up for, for teachers. It'll help education. Uh, you're opposed to a severance tax. Uh, no, I think his wording is make the companies pay. Make up. the companies pay up. For, yeah, there okay. it is. You got it. And, Thank you. And he knows better. He knows these companies pay corporate net income tax, um, as I believe he might pay corporate net income tax at his company. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knows that they pay corporate stock and franchise tax, and uh, their employees pay, ta- pay taxes. They have contributed over uh, $2.5 billion through the taxes that they pay to the budget of Pennsylvania over the last five years. That's a significant uh, impact. Um, but if you listen to carefully to what he says, he's going to balance the entire budget, or actually the education budget, on just increasing the taxes on a company, on an industry, and the many jobs that come from that, uh, and the many new jobs that come from that, by increasing the, uh, the, the uh, taxes on them. Well, if you just look at the pension requirement, $610 million new every year, you can't tax any one company enough to keep up with that. It's just impossible, and he knows better. Final question for you, Governor. I know our time is short with you this morning. You're, you're busy, but... Uh do you think you talked a moment ago about having the courage to take on tough issues? Do you think you've become uh, in some of these polls? Again, I know the main poll you're looking at is the one on Election Day. But do you think you've become unpopular because you made some of the tough decisions early and people said, you know what, that's going to hurt some people. That's going to be painful. That's going to make us make some choices. And people maybe have gotten into an attitude in this country where they're not ready to make the hard choices anymore. Your thoughts? It, frankly, yes, because, you know, and I warned everybody back when I was running, these are, we have tough decisions if we're not going to raise the taxes on the people in Pennsylvania. I kept my promise. I hope they remember that when it comes uh, election day. Uh, we haven't raised those taxes. We're dealing with a tough issue. Uh, one of the tough issues is the pension, and if you talk to the school districts in Pennsylvania, there's 163 school districts that are going to be raising property taxes above the index without having to do a referendum in order to pay pensions. That's only going to continue. So what they're really going to look at in November is do they want a leader who's willing to take on the tough decisions and made them or do they want somebody who says no, there is not a, there is no pension problem and we're just going to tax business so that uh, we can continue to spend more and more money. 
I think we'll all be better off if we could all come around and look at the numbers and all say, okay, here are the numbers. Now, what are our ways in which we're going to try to fix this at the end of the day and get away from our sideism that we seem to be so prevalent within this country? Governor, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us this morning. It's always a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you, Gary. Look forward to talking to you again. Take care. We'll do it. Governor Tom Corbett with us here this morning on the Gary Sutton Show. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. What's your reaction to what Governor Corbett had to say? 1-800-357-0910. We'll open up the lines for you right now. You could jump in. You just heard the governor. What's he talking about? You decide what you just heard here on the Gary Sutton Show on News Radio 910 WSBA.